Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Japan, Colombia, perhaps another World Cup upset. No one expected Japan to beat Colombia, especially after what they did in the last World Cup. How did Japan do it? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So, on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna break down how Japan beat Colombia. Colombia, Japan, and what's proving to be the most balanced group at the World Cup, Group H, which side would look to take advantage of that group and look to move on to the next round? Colombia obviously struggled and they fell short. They were down to 10 men for a very long time, but what did Japan do right? We're gonna briefly break that down. When we do, we look at Japan, more of a 4-2-3-1, Osako up front ahead of Inui, Haraguchi, and Kagawa in midfield, Shibasaki and Hasebe in midfield, sitting deep protecting the back four. When we look at Colombia, also more of a 4-2-3-1, no James Rodriguez, Falcao ahead of Quintero, on the flank you have Ezequerdo, and you have Quadrado, and in midfield you have Lerma and Carlos Sanchez. What went right, Colombia, didn't start well and that was the problem for them. Carlos Sanchez obviously getting sent off but that kind of was the theme of the game and when you look at it it's because of the key man Osako rolls Davison Sanchez early, breaks free, should score. Sanchez is booked for a handball. Was he right to get sent off? Was it a handball? Here are the interviews. We're not going to discuss that. We have to break down the tactics, what went right and what went wrong and that was something that did go wrong. It was a problem because now you take Sanchez out of the equation, but Sanchez was already a targeted man. We saw Kagwa step to him and offer him some pressure, and that was a key issue that was going to stem throughout the game, so he comes out of the game. Now, Colombia play 90% of the game without a man. Quintero drops deeper. Now they have to move to a 4-4-1, and as they sit deeper, it actually, from a open play perspective benefited them because in the first half Japan had problems breaking them down. One of the issues is that the center midfielders had all the time in the world to get on the ball. There was no real pressure on them. Falcao was deeper, but he couldn't cover both. So they would pick up the ball in deep positions. However, they couldn't find Kagawa between the lines, and that was a big issue. Kagawa is a great transitional attacking midfielder, but when it comes to breaking down deep blocks, he always has a problem providing that final pass, making that penetrative pass between the lines in tight spaces. So he couldn't get that done, and that was was the big issue issue for Japan and that's why they didn't really get going in the first half however the end-to-end -end nature of the game ensured that Colombia always had a counter-attacking threat but their key player was Quintero he was the man dropping deep playing diagonal balls in behind the defense we look at one play where he found Quadrado breaking in behind Nagatomo Quadrado, bro Quadrado broke in towards the box but his cross wasn't that good and that was obviously an issue for Quadrado throughout the game Quintero also was able to get on the ball. He tried to play another diagonal. That didn't work out for him. What happened here was the fact that they could rely on Falcao, who did make up for not having number 10. He was superb. His all-around game in terms of dropping deep, holding off defenders as defenders came to him, linking play with the midfield, and pushing them up the field. That was pivotal to what they were trying to do, and Falcao was superb in that respect. There was also one play we have to think about Quadrado coming off and uh, Peckerman deciding to base the team around Quintero. He had an option. He picked Quintero. Quintero moved to the right. Barrios took off Quadrado. What happened now was that Quintero was cutting in, in centrally. So was Ikerdo throughout the game. His problem was that he was doing it, but he wasn't winning the ball. They were trying to get the left back forward to, off, to offer him with, but that didn't work out in his favor because Haraguchi was tracking him well, and that was a problem. But there was Quintero trying to pop into those pockets of spaces. There was one time where he did cut in central, clip the ball over the box, for Falcao, he, was able to, he wasn't able to bring it down, but he poked it on goal, and it showed the signs of a team that was building stride. Quintero obviously scored the free kick. That equalized the game, but when you look at it as a whole, that was how Colombia got back into the game. But Japan did do something well, and this the way they pressed. They ensured that, and this is why they had to take Quintero out of the game, was the fact that Osako and Kago, Kagawa were pressing the central midfielders. If... Osako did push forward, Inui would come in. They didn't mind if Arias pushed forward because it looked like Inui was trying to get 
forward and break on the counterattack. We look at one play where Kagawa wins the ball in midfield. I think he dispossessed Quintero, and then he slides in Inui into half space. He should score, but he doesn't. But that was a warning side, and perhaps that is why Quintero ended up moving to the right flank because they needed protection in that midfield. But the way they pressed was superb. They ensured that Colombia couldn't build out of the back, and they had to play through Falcao. However, unfortunately for Japan, Falcao was very good with his back to goal, and that could have led to some problems, but it didn't. The second half, however, Colombia lost their counterattacking threat. Perhaps legs were tired. It's not easy chasing the ball or defending with 10 men for the entire game. So what happened now is that they were dropping deeper, and this kind of helped because, as we said, Barrios and... Um, Lerma were able to protect the back four. Kagawa couldn't find spaces into that, in between the lines or in the channel. And as they pushed forward, the problem was that Osako became the key man. He was able in the first, in the second half, he was drifting out into flanks. He was trying to get the team and trying to get Kagawa involved, trying to get him to push forward, trying to get the midfielders to push into space, trying to get Inui to push into space. That wasn't really working out, but his overall threat was there and he was proving to be a real problem. The first time Kagawa found space in the left channel, he moved into that space alone. He played it into Osako. He rolled Davison Sanchez fired a shot on goal the keeper saved it that was a big warning side Ospina made a great save there was another opportunity where he dropped deeper Osako picked up the ball located Inui cutting into space in the left channel behind Arias got the ball curled his effort on goal Ospina pushed it away you look at what he was doing it was an all-round center forward performance where Falcao was great in the first half Osako was great in the second half another instance a long ball held played in, he holds off Murillo, his center back marker. What happens is that he guides Sakai out right back into the play. He should score, he doesn't, but from that corner kick, Osako rises high and he nods his effort into the net. He was pivotal to getting uh, Carlos Sanchez sent off, that won the penalty, and he scores the game winner, and he was integral in everything that they did great in the second half. Koseki Honda came on, for Kagawa, he operated from the right, trying to get combinations down that flank. He It didn't really work into that great effect. He did get a shot on goal, but that wasn't much. As for Colombia, when you look at the changes they made, they brought on Carlos Baca, they brought on Hamas Rodriguez. That didn't really change the game for them in that perspective. Hamas was pressing a bit higher, and it allowed, there was actually space to create 3v2s, which forced Varios to move out into that flank to kind of help protect that side until Hamas recovered his run and ensured that he made it 3v3, but he wasn't able to impact the game. He did have a great chance, but besides that one chance, he didn't really influence the game. Baca didn't influence the game, and Falcao was left without service. But when you break it down, this puts Colombia in a big hole, whereas Japan, a team that probably people didn't expect to get out of this group, win a big game. They could, they could thank Osako for his all-around performance, and they could possibly build on this going forward because they defended well when they didn't have the ball. They looked to press the deep-lying midfielders, ensuring that Colombia couldn't build out of the back. And although they survived a few scares, overall, Osako's all-around performance merits full, th fully three points, whereas Colombia now need to win their next game. And without Sanchez, they're going to have to find a way to incorporate Quintero and James Rodriguez because they can't afford to drop more points. But let me know what you guys think. Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget to upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.